All right, welcome back. We are happy to have you stay back with us for this next segment. Uh, we're talking about education tourism now. Now, Nigeria loses a minimum of one trillion naira uh, to education tourism with over 50,000 Nigerians currently studying in Ghana, Benin Republic, Egypt, and other countries even outside of Africa. Now, during the military era, uh, many public holders sent their children to schools within the country. You know, but um, the story changed drastically when we uh, got into our democratic setting. Now, the question is, how can this be legislated against? A very big question, how can we minimize the number of Nigerians going outside uh, to study, especially children of public uh, office holders? Joining us for the discussion, we also, we still have with us Osigwe Bilo in our legal studio. Osigwe is a public affairs analyst. Uh, Thanks for staying back. <laughs> I think that's what I'll say. No and then let's head over to our Port Harcourt studio. Uh, we have Barrister Edwin Jonathan. Uh, Barrister Edwin Jonathan is a lecturer at law, uh, River State University, and also a public affairs analyst. You're also very much welcome to the program. Thank you. All right, let's begin from Port Harcourt. Let's begin with you, uh, Mr. Jonathan. Now, from the, um, from the uh, opening remarks, uh, we saw that during the military era, a lot of um, public office holders send their children to maybe unity schools, uh, maybe some private schools, if, and if we had uh, any at that time. And, um, but schools in Nigeria basically were the places their children or wards uh, attended, uh, at least up to secondary and sometimes university uh, level. But now uh, we, we see that almost, if not almost every public office holder has their children or their child outside Nigeria studying. Uh, would you say it is um, a matter of um, security or any excuses they might want to give, or do you think this practice should be stopped? Thank you very much for the privilege to join this conversation. And is is uh, for us for those of us in the academic world, is really disturbing, but. Let me quickly say that this happens because uh, those in public office have lost faith in our universities and our educational system in the country. That's why they go for the best, and the best they believe is outside. And that's because they've refused to invest, uh, you know, maximally on education in this country. And then they want the best for their children, and that best is not within the shores of Nigeria. And it's really sad and unfortunate. It demonstrates how much committed they are, if you like, uh, to the Nigerian dream. Because um, the, the progress of every nation begins with a sound and functional educational system. And uh, once government is trying to uh, you know, pay lip service to funding education, it shows by the way they themselves respond you know, with respect to their own children. They want the best for their children, so they go abroad. They go to even as close as Ghana, you know. And we are the giant of Africa. We cannot provide a good education for our people. Uh, it's, it's really sad. But let me also say this, that uh, legislating against it, uh, to my mind, is not a, a practical uh, a possibility. This is because... Uh, what we are doing in this nation, we, it's not, our problem is not uh, lack of laws. Our pr problem is lack of commitment to the existing laws. You know, uh, you know uh, uh, if you legislate against it, it will only be uh, obeyed in the breach thereof. They will find a way to circumvent it. What I think is the issue here is that we should find a situation where very noble men get into public office. It's about nobility. Yes, it's about nobility in action, nobility in intentions, and uh, what have you. So, you, know, you have to model the leadership that you want Nigerians to see. When your children are schooling abroad, that's why you don't worry whether ASU is on strike. When your uh, students, uh, your children are schooling abroad, that's why you don't mind if the university is, is underfunded. Even whether there's cultism in school, it doesn't concern you because your children are safe outside the shores of this country. And it's a very sad thing. We should... Look at the situation. Just as I was following the conversation, I was watching uh, the conversation that just ended, how that the 43 uh, ministerial nominees were asked to take a bar and go. I mean, how can a man take a bar and go without telling us what he intends to do in the office he's about to enter? It's sad. You know, no matter how much you know in one area, you cannot 
the, the, your knowledge of one particular area does not translate to knowledge in a different area. You have to learn the rules. You have to show us exactly what you're going to do. And this is very sad. We have a nation where the leaders don't care about what happens in our education. They don't care about security because their families, their children are all safe abroad. And then the rest of us walking the streets, it doesn't matter what happens to us. And even when you raise a voice and say, oh, this is not proper, this is a proper way to do it, you suggest some proper way out of it, you are labeled an enemy of state. Why on earth should a leader of this country, who really, really, really is utilitarian, who really is altruistic, who believes in this nation, send his or her children out of this country for education? When you are studying in a, a particular country, you are influenced by the environment, you know about the, 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 the trajectory of that nation. But when you are here, as a Nigerian, you'll be able to go through with us what we are going through. So when we become our leader, you know exactly what our challenges are, and you can confront them head on. So I do not think a legislation would work, because like I said earlier in my opening remarks, it is, uh, well, one way, a breach of the fundamental rights, uh, with respect to information and all of that. And then, uh, but it will not be honored except in the breach thereof. They will find a way to start government. Don't we have legislations on fraud? Don't we have legislations on uh, economic crimes? But how many of these people who are even legislating are free of all those, you know? We, it's, it's a sad day, but I think we should find a way to get more noble persons into office who will practice nobility, and it will be evidently seen that this is where our leader go, and we are going that way. And because John Maxwell said, where the leaders go, the nation goes. All right, thank you so very much for that opening intervention, Edwin Jonathan. Uh, let me play a bit of the, the devil's advocate here. Uh, 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 figures have it that um, for the 2019 alone, 1.8 million Nigerian children uh, participated in uh, uh, the last jam examinations. And uh, um, I am sure that the university uh, system alone in Nigeria can only accommodate maybe about 10 or 20 percent of that number. Uh, so wouldn't you think that um, for such of um, education, uh, I mean, they should move out and probably get um, education rather than wait uh, for another one year or two years before they can get admitted into univer I mean, Nigerian universities? What would you think? I agree that we have challenges with respect to, uh, you know, capacity to uh, admit uh, the number of persons who are already qualified for education at the tertiary level. But the thing is that if each of those universities, I do not subscribe to, you know, opening more universities, but I, su I subscribe to, you know, providing the necessary infrastructure, you know. The necessary, if we have the necessary infrastructure, we can enlarge our capacity to receive more students and then uh, be able to instruct them, you know. But the reason that it is so limited is that the infrastructures are also limited. For instance, if you have a classroom that can take 200 students, you know, on the average, and you admit 400, that's a crowd. When you admit 400, then the learning environment is violated, and there's not so much that can happen under that environment. So the existing universities should be properly funded. We have massive lands, at least in my own school and other places, and infrastructure development can happen in all, all of those, whether federal, state, and even private universities. Just enlarge their capacity to receive more students, and they will. And then, of course, uh, when you do that, you open up the floodgates for more qualified uh, uh, you know, teaching staff also to be engaged. It's all about funding, sir. It's all about funding. Once you increase the funding, you can deal with that, uh, you know, that challenge of uh, the, the, the uh, uh, you know, monumental le level of uh, increase, rather, in uh, those who want to uh, access tertiary education. The solution is not to send them to Ghana or any other country because all you can think of the revenue those countries are also earning, you know, because Nigerian students have to come to their schools. All right. I do not uh, thank say you, that Edwin Jonathan, for that. Uh, let's the, talk some more the, a bit the with uh, is, uh, Osigui Bello so right here in Lagos. We'll come back to you uh, as quickly as possible, as if time permits. Now, um, while I was in university, I spent an extra year in school uh, because of strike. And um, one year was actually very little as compared to people who spent uh, nine years in school and uh, eight years in school for a four-year course or a five-year course. 
Now, this is very disturbing. If you asked me uh, back then in school if I, had, if I wanted to change my school, of course I would change university. I wouldn't want to spend an extra time in school. Could this ASO strike, so to speak, be a reason why uh, uh, public officers send their children outside Nigeria? Um, the, the first response to that question is what could have given birth to ASU having such an agitation in their hearts to go on strike? Of course, too many of us also witnessed strike in our university days, and it was not a good experience at all. But when you look at what is on ground, how the public pulse is being siphoned on educational tourism, it gives lecturers the reasons to want to go on strike when our universities are not properly funded, when the lecturers are not well paid, in comparison to those who are in politics, when the facilities available with which you use impacting knowledge are not even enough or are not adequate, automatically they will strike. Now, you agree with me that between um, 2002 up until 2017, Nigeria have recorded about 20 major strikes burning out from ASU and ASUP. And that is both the university and the polytechnic. About 20 in a row. Now, there is no child who uh, was in school at this particular time that will not feel the, 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 the bane. But it's a major problem. If you check the... Of course, you just showed the picture on your slide now, and we saw that on social media. You looked at all the public servants whose children are schooling overseas and not just any other school. We made reference to Ghana. You don't see any of them sending their children to Ghana. We have over 19,000 of our Nigerian people schooling in India. We have been told that over 10,000 an annually uh, go on educational tourism to the U.S. If you put that figures together, most of these people or these kids are politician children. And... The, the expenses for this education are predicated on the public pulse of this nation. It's weighing us down. I remember in 2016, the uh, uh, Senator Binta, Binta Masi, okay. she was at the time the uh, Senate Chairman for TED Fund. TED Fund is the Tertiary Institution Trust Fund. She, she reputed to say to Nigeria, it was recorded, that over $2 billion dollars was expended on uh, uh, educational tourism. Now, if you put that together, that's over seven, 720 billion. Yeah, no. That's almost a trillion. Now, fast forward. That was in 2016. Between 2016 and now, how much do you think would have gone on this tourism? Now, we have public servants, and I, I want us to even reframe that uh, word. Use, if we use the word public servant, it would not do us well. I would have loved Nigerians to look at those people and refer to them as executive kings because they live larger than life. You have children who also live larger than life. And then you have a system where you no longer study to pass. You've got to find other medium with which you, you move from one level to the other. All because the people who are supposed to legislate on certain laws that will help us retain academic excellence in this part of the world, I'm not doing that. Now, if my child or my son is studying abroad and I'm the Minister for Education, like our protocol lecturer have said, I will bother less on what is happening in our educational system. Because first and foremost, we don't have leaders. That should be clarified. What we have in our nation today are rulers. Because leaders are those who take the pains of their people at heart. And how do we move forward? Now, any nation that should change our citizenry with education, of course, is going to hit the wall. Now, in, 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 in 1945, we have the United Nations Education and uh, Science UNESCO. and um, Cultural, yes, UNESCO, coming to there. And they gave nations advice as to what to al allocate for education. 26% of your national budget should be pushed into education. Have we done that? The only time we got closer to 10% was in Jonathan administration in 2014. The budget was about 5 trillion, national budget 
was about 5 trillion, and then you had 9.9% as budget allocation for education. Ever since that time, up until this administration, it has always watered down. And until we begin to allocate enough resources, there is nowhere our educational system can progress. It's hurting some of us. Many of us, like myself, a product of public school, and we give credence and thanks to uh, the late Obafemi Awolowo, and also thanks to the former governor of Lagos State, Latif Jaconde, who also drive that vision. Hence, I've always said to all of these political rulers that wearing Awolowo's cap does not translate to Awolowo's brain. That man knew what it takes to educate a child. That if you want a nation that will develop, the capital flight is too much. And we don't have human development program. To develop the human resources in this part of the world, education must be number one. But we don't have that here. Because who, of course, we don't know from what we have seen in the Senate now, who is going to head the educational ministry. And so we didn't hear from them, if you were pushed to education ministry, what do you have to offer? We didn't hear from any such. Yes. So when you all of a sudden push a nominee to go and head education, what does he have to offer? We didn't hear. Nobody interrogated such. And every society strives on education. If you need peace in a country, education is a, is a must. You know, if the Shite members or the uh, IMN people had been well educated, you think anybody want to die on the basis of, of riot? Or if the people who are causing insecurity in our nation today, the Boko Harams, are well educated, you think anybody want to carry guns? So education, first and foremost, is the is 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 a is a bedrock for any sustainable economy. We are lacking on that. Bello, thank you. That's a place to, to land the conversation. Let's quickly go to Abuja where we still have um, Edwin Jonathan, or rather Port Harcourt where we still have Edwin Jonathan. So uh, quickly in your closing remark, uh, what would you say could be the way forward here? We can't continue like this, yes. Like I said, legislation will not solve the problem. But we just have to do a lot more public enlightenment and then encourage our leaders to, uh, you know, allow their children, put their children in public schools. You know, when I went to school, I went to a public school. And we, then public schools were the best because government invested a lot in public school. But today, a transition, a very negative transition has occurred such that if you want functional and effective education, you have to go to private schools. Now, those private schools are being run, majority of them are being run by, just as my friend in the studio said, political rulers. They are not leaders. I agree with you completely. Because leaders will seek out the best interests of those that are following. They've set up very big schools where even in Port Harcourt, there are schools where tuition is paid in dollars. And these very rich people send their children to those schools and thereafter move them abroad again for tertiary education. So my suggestion is that government should fund education, public school, massively. At least hit the 25% uh, you know, of the budgetary uh, recommendation. And let's see how we can get our public schools to be much better. And again, let it be a matter of convention, you know, in the practice of nobility, for a leader to say, look, uh, whatever it takes for my children to go to school here, I will do that. I'll model the leadership that, uh, or the leader that I am, so others can follow. You know, but that's the legislation will not help. That's my take, sincerely. Barrister Edwin Jonathan, lecturer at Law, River State University. Thank you so much for your time with us on the program. Thank you very much. And also many thanks me. to you, Osigui Bello, a public affairs analyst, for your time with us from start to finish. Always a pleasure. All right. To have you. Thank you so much. So we'll take a breather. When we come back, sports updates next. Please stay with us. Say something. We say no.